Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome back to Coding Shorts. Today I want to talk about a new feature in .NET 8. This one I've really been hoping would come sooner rather than later. But in .NET 8, they've made a lot of changes to the way that identity works. And they wanted to be able to support building JWTs from identity without us having to handwrite all this code. And that's finally come to fruition. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm here in Visual Studio. I'm just going to create a new project. And I'm just going to create an ASP.NET Core app. This could be an app that you already have. And I'm going to call this Map My Identity. For lack of a better name, I'm going to create a solution. It's important that you pick .NET 8. Hopefully, this will be out of preview soon and actually we'll get a released version sometime in November. But you'll need to be in .NET 8 for any of this to work. And I'm going to turn on individual accounts. Now, I think it's important to note that storing your authentication in your own databases and such is really common. But that does mean that you're going to be responsible if that database is ever breached and things can be done. That's why using something like, like Auth0 or Azure AD or a number of other providers out there to do your authentication is a pretty good idea. And interestingly, it requires not a lot of change in your code to do that. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. I'll probably follow up with a new coding short about how to do that with the Windows Identity Platform and more importantly, Azure AD in another video. But let's stick with this. Let's get rid of that. And we can see if you've been doing .NET at all, this is going to look very familiar. There's some Razor pages in here. There's an area for identity so you can change the layout page for those identity pages if that's important to you. And it has a DB context here that's just storing the data for our individual accounts. So let's first open up a command shell. And I'm just going to say, make sure we're in the directory of the project. Yep, that's perfect. And I'm just going to say .NET EF database update because this has migrations already for building a database. And in fact, it has a uniquely named database name already set up uh, for demo databases using local DB. We're going to get this warning about that I haven't updated the tools yet to 8.0, but it doesn't matter. All worked and we should have our application. So if we run our new application, before we run it, I'm going to actually open up the launch profiles. I want to change the build that we're using to run this, this HTTP runner. And I just want to give it a friendly port number because I'm going to be writing some individual tests. So I just didn't want to have to copy and paste and not remember what it is. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're going to run it with Microsoft Edge. That's perfect. And here's our brand new application, right? It's nothing in it. It's a blank slate. There's a privacy page. There's a home page. Nothing much to see here. But because we added those individual accounts, it has the notion of registering and logging in. And so let's make that work before we talk about how we're going to protect APIs. So I'm just going to create a new account for me at AOL.com. Feel free to try to reach me there, but I will tell you now that may or may not be my actual email address. Go ahead and register. Since we've registered, I should have I should be able to log into the application. And there it says, hello, Sean, shows me a profile. All of that is fine, right? We have all of identity working. We have a particular problem here. And that problem is that while we can protect our individual Razor pages and such with authentication, now that we have it supported, it's going to be harder if we are using an API. And I'm going to use a minimal API here just to be simple. So I'm going to just create app.map.mapget api foo. And I'm just going to return some very dumb data, right? I'm just going to say return new one, two. And so all this is is just a really simple API. This could be any API that we want to secure. Let's go ahead and run this. Since we're going to be working with the API now, let's go ahead and just change those settings to not launch the browser. We just want this to be nice and simple. And I want to create a new 
new file here, and I'm just going to call it test.http. This is a file that I've covered in one of my other coding shorts. I'll actually leave a link to it right here. And I just want to say get HTTP localhost. This is where one of the reasons I wanted to include a friendly port number so I didn't have to go look at it. I'm just going to say API foo, right? This is our API and I should be able to just send a request and it should work, right? If I send this request, works just like you'd expect it. It gets a 200 for returning our data. All is good with the world right now. But what if we add on to this require authorization, right? We have by default identity set up as our authorization, but we're going to say we can't get to this unless we're authorized. And this is where for years I've been teaching people how to write and generate their own JWTs. So there's sort of two problems here. One, when I go there, this minimal API isn't treated any differently than any other page. So I actually have a 200, but what did it return? It returned the login page. Probably not what you want when you're calling that API. So there's a few different things we need to do here. So in other cases, I would have and set up our own authentication here to support this. And even if I were and even if I were writing my own and not using identity, I would want something here that would handle that. And we'd often do that with builder.services.add JWT bearer. That is one of the options that we've used for a long time to use JWTs. But in our case, we're not using JWTs. We're actually gonna say add authentication this is a new call as part of the new identity stuff. And here I could do things like add cookie, add OAuth, et cetera. And I'm going to add bearer token. And I'm going to use instead of JWT bearer constants, I'm going to say identity constants dot bearer scheme. So I'm telling it I have an authentication scheme here and I want to support bearer tokens. This doesn't mean we're only going to support bearer tokens. Default identity is still going to do what it wants, but there are going to be cases where we're going to want to support this. And in order to do that, we actually have to create a policy. We're going to use add authorization builder, and then we're going to add a policy. We could do this with default if this were an API only project and we'd be good to go. But because we have web pages that we want to leave alone, we want to create a policy that we can just apply to our APIs. I'm going to call it our API policy. And then I'm just going to configure it. And what it does is it passes in a new policy object for us to go ahead and add options. First thing we're going to say is we're going to require an authenticated user. Now this, you could have a lot of different kinds of limitations, but usually this is the first one. Make sure if I've applied this policy somewhere that that API is going to require authentication. And the other one is I'm going to add authentication schemes and much to your surprise, I'm going to say identity constants dot bear scheme. And I'll simply come down here to our require authorization and give it the name of the policy that this is going to follow, right? All we're doing is setting up bearer tokens to be used by our APIs in conjunction with the identity. So if we run this again, and we send that request again, we're going to get an unauthorized because the bearer token knows that this is for requests that don't need to be redirected to a login page. Instead, it needs to return the status code. So we're sort of halfway there now. We have an API and what we want to be able to do is say authorization, bearer, and then some magic number, right? That's how we want to be able to access this. But we have to have a way of getting that. And this is where, and this is where a lot of effort can be put into having an endpoint that generates the JWT and then adding the JWT middleware to check for the bearer token and make sure it's valid. But because identity wanted to simplify this, we can actually just come over here to where we're adding default identity and add a new piece that says add API endpoints. What does that mean? That is, means that these API endpoints are going to support logging in and registering and some of the other things that you would normally do through the UI 
through the API. So let's assume that maybe you're using a spa as your front end. Instead of having to write all these, this is, these are just going to add those API endpoints. We still need to map them though. So let's go ahead and say app map API identity. And we need to give it our user. The class that represents a user is identity user. Normally you would derive this and do some different things, but we can say identity user for now. And this would work, but this is going to add them to the root of the website. And so what you're usually going to do is actually say map group, which allows you to create a endpoint that has other endpoints. And so I'm going to say this is going to be API auth. And then we're going to map all of our identity APIs from that group. That's just going to allow us to put these API endpoints for identity prefixed by some URL. That's really all it's doing for us there. So what does that mean if we run this now that we have all this working? We should be able to create another call, get localhost 8088 again, API auth login. So this is adding on to that group, a login, and we're gonna say content type is application JSON. And you, if it's up to you, you can misspell or spell it correctly. And here I'm just going to say username, and these are documented what the data that it's expecting. But for login, it should be pretty obvious, username and password. And I'm going to say sean at AOL.com. Remember, this is the user that I registered with the website. Password equals password. And if I send this request, we're going to get a method not allowed. And that's because we're generating something. We're generating a token, so this has to be a post. And what it returns is an object that contains the bearer token as well as a refresh token. We're just going to grab that bearer token. It also says how long it expires. And by default, it expires in 3,600 seconds, which if I could do the math, I would do better. So we should be able to just replace our bearer token with this token we just got from the server, right? Well, we can. Now it works. If we get rid of the authorization header, and send it unauthorized. But as soon as we include that authorization header, it works. And so at no point in our program do we get our hands dirty building JWTs, validating JWTs. But this only works with identity accounts. This is where you're using identity stored in your own data stores to store your own data. In the case of something like Azure AD or Auth0 or any of the other providers that are out there, they're going to be responsible for generating the JWTs for you. And so you wouldn't need this in that case anyway. Make sense? What I really like about this is .NET 8 is finally exposing this idea of simplifying identity for a lot of users. So a lot of users aren't going to use third-party providers like Azure AD, and they have existing sites that use this that they want to simplify in being able to secure their APIs. This provides a really simple way of doing it without having to necessarily understand everything about how JWTs are generated, how refresh tokens work, any of that. It just works. And because of that, I'm pretty happy. If you ever get to this part of the video, you know that I'm usually asking you to register and like and subscribe and all of that other stuff. I want to say that all you viewers who have watched me before, I want to thank you. We hit 10,000 subscribers, small number in YouTube terms, but a big number in my heart. I'm really happy we're getting there. Spread the word if you think the content I'm making is useful to your coworkers and other things. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it. Um, go ahead and ask any questions you have in the comments, and I will do my best to point you in the right direction. For Coding Shorts, this has been Sean Wildermuth. I'll see you next time. <music>